Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about something very exciting. The HPA is about to get signed into law. Nah, just kidding. We're talking about ITAR. <laughs> Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions, which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC2018. Earlier this week, the Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, or DDTC, published a notice on their website, which contained two proposed rules. The rules complement one another by removing certain things from the purview of the International Traffic in Arms Regulations, which you guys know as ITAR, and placing them under the Export Administration Regulations, known as the EAR, which is run by the Department of Commerce. For those unfamiliar with ITAR, we're going to do a quick history lesson here. In 1976, Congress passed the Arms Export Control Act. Its purpose was pretty simple, to protect U.S. defense technology. The act gave the president the authority to regulate the import and export of defense articles and defense services. ITAR was the result. ITAR requires that any person who engages in the United States in the business of either manufacturing or exporting or temporarily importing defense articles or furnishing defense services must register with DDTC. As you may have heard, the registration is a measly $2,250 a year. Chump change, right? And if you listen carefully, you'll have noted that you don't actually have to export anything in order to be required to register. In addition to that hefty registration fee, the regulations surrounding ITAR are rather confusing and quite burdensome. The firearms community has longed for relief from ITAR and now might be getting some. The United States Munitions List, or USML, contains a variety of categories which specify articles that fall under the purview of ITAR. For the purposes of our discussion, we're only going to be focusing on Category 1, However, there are proposed changes to Categories 2 and 3 as well, and there's quite a few more that we're not even talking about. Category 1 is titled Firearms, Close Assault Weapons, and Combat Shotguns. You'll find things like non-automatic and semi-automatic firearms up to 50 cal, combat shotguns, and this includes shotguns having a barrel length of less than 18 inches, and silencers included in this category. The proposed changes would remove non-automatic and semi-automatic firearms up to 50 cal from the USML. However, fully automatic firearms, fully automatic shotguns, and yes, they do exist, as well as silencers and specifically designed parts and components will continue to be subjected to ITAR. Interestingly, flash suppressors have been removed from the purview of ITAR as well. The proposed changes also specify that magazine manufacturers will be excluded from having to register under ITAR unless they produce magazines capable of holding more than 50 rounds, because 51 is a problem. Any of the items removed from ITAR will be placed under the EAR. So what will that mean for the manufacturers of those products? Assuming these proposed rules are implemented and they don't manufacture anything else that's controlled by ITAR, they'll no longer be required to register with DDTC. However, if they wish to export any of the items which would then fall under the EAR, they would still need to require the appropriate licenses from the Department of Commerce. In short, the proposed changes will reduce the regulatory burden that a number of smaller manufacturers and gunsmiths are currently faced with. However, it is not a slam dunk. Small silencer manufacturers or anybody manufacturing post-sample machine guns will still be required to register under ITAR. Once the proposed changes are published in the Federal Register, there will be a 45-day comment period where you can submit your comments on the proposed changes. So let's recap and break it down Barney style. At the top on one hand we have ITAR, and on the other, the EAR. Under ITAR is the USML, which contains a variety of categories including Category 1. Category 1 contains a number of specified items, including non-automatic and semi-automatic firearms up to 50 cal. The proposed regulatory change would take those firearms and move them under the EAR, thus reducing the compliance nightmare that companies face when dealing with ITAR. Silencer guys? Sorry about your luck, no changes there. 
I suspect this will have a good chance of being adopted as this has been in the works for some time. Time will tell if that's the reality. Are you sick of bad information finding its way around the internet? Then you need to share this video. Make sure you hit that like button and get subscribed. If you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. If you're looking for our podcast on TGC, make sure you check that out. We're on iTunes under the Gun Collective Podcast. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.